lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim job at uh, TWA. A friend of mine was working at TWA. She referred me. I went down. I got hired at TWA. And really, that was the turning point in my life. Okay. When I got the job at TWA, I scored, scored in my class the highest, because you have to take a like a two-week training program, and I scored, scored the highest out of everyone. And how do I know that? Because this instructor came and said, hey, I just want you to know you scored higher than everyone else in this classroom. You have some of the highest scores that we've seen come through this training. So that impressed me. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Go see, right? <laughs> but that just started empowering me 
And then I had to, um, you know, dress up, you know, so I was running out to Sears, you know, give me little outfits and everything so that I can dress up and go into this call center for TWA right downtown. Well, TWA had the, um, had the closed down. They gave us like this severance package. Um, I had already started nursing school, but they had to close down because of 9-11. Okay. And so after 9-11, of course, they shut down. And so now I'm just focusing totally on my education. I get this service package to go to UMSO, um, to take 10 grand to get my BS in. And that was my path. You know, got a job at BJC. I worked BJC neurosurgery for four years. I see one of my good friends is on here. Her name is Tiffany Neal. She and I went to school together. And Tiffany said, I'm so proud of you. You come a long way. So those who right. know me, like Rhonda yeah. and like my sister Tiffany Neal, know my path and know my journey. Oh, baby, I have a story. I have a play. I have an empire spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's important. And for those of you who are just tuning in on Blog Talk Radio, because we are on Blog Talk Radio right now, this is Let's Talk About It with Rhonda. And our special guest today is the president of Black Nurses Rock, Mrs. Felicia Mitchell Hampton. So we just went over her story and her journey into becoming a nurse and getting to the point where she is now as the president of Black Nurses Rock. Now, and I felt that that was important because there are many of us Mm -hmm. women still who are on a journey, right? On a journey. And it's important for us to see ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? So if God is no respecter of person, but if he do it for you, he'll do it for you, and he'll do it for you, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and I wanted her to say that because I don't think, like I said, she gives herself enough credit for all that she has done and is doing, even in the community now, Felicia and I are great friends, but we're so different. She's a foot stomper. She's going to be out here. She's going to be the one knocking on the doors, uh, talking to people face to face, getting things done, right, which is why I feel like you're going to be a great fit for this position of, of, of the president of Black Nurses Rock. Me, I'm a behind-the-scenes kind of girl. Really? I, I am. I'm more behind-the-scenes person. But so let's talk about um, some of the things that's going to happen or has happened with Black Nurses Rock. So what has Black Nurses Rock done for nurses or what have the nurses attributed to Black Nurses Rock and how is it going to grow or what is your vision for Black Nurses Rock? Okay, so let's say Black Nurses Rock has been around since 2014. And uh, it was actually formed as a 501c3 in 2016. And I just want to tell you some of the things. We have 4,000 active members uh, here in the United States, Canada, parts of Africa, um, and a few other places. I don't remember them all offhand. But we have 4,000 active members. And I've said two years we've been a 501c3, 501c3. And we've been around since 2014, but two years. Mm-hmm. So our founder, Dr. Remetrius Moss, phenomenal woman, was a, a phenomenal nurse, was able to see a mission and see a need. Because what a lot of people don't understand, there are um, health disparities in our community. But at the same time, when you go into uh, the healthcare system, there is also not equal representation of nurses who look like me, mm-hmm. right? And we're trying to bring that diversity not only into education but into healthcare, right? In all sectors, you know. And 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 so for her to see such a a need, you know, that we now have one hundred and ninety thousand Facebook members with eighty three thousand Facebook likes. That's huge in two years. Okay. Think about how long we've been trying to, to build. Years sometime, right? Mm-hmm. 50 local chapters throughout the United States, Canada, and I'm not sure if we have one in Africa, but 50 local chapters, that's huge. And her mission was really just to empower, inspire, and embrace the community 
um, nurses of color. But when we speak about black nurses rock, her mission was not to exclude mm-hmm. any one race or, you know, or just solely create a platform that was solely for minorities. Black nurses rock is open to all. Okay. You know, so we don't discriminate color, sex, any of that. It's open to all. Anybody who is a part of our mission, we want you to come on board, right? Um, now our, our national uh, president is Dr. Bruce Walker, and he's taken, just like myself, becoming the president of St. Louis, he's taken and continuing the mission of the former president. And I think it's necessary for me to give a shout-out to those who actually um, went and did the footwork and the paperwork to get us here in St. Louis a chapter and then turn around and we became a 501c3 and we did all that work. And that was Nico Grimes and Dr. – I'm sorry, Nico Former and Dr. Michelle Grimes, okay. right? And I talk with my hands. I try not to talk with my hands. <laughs> but we, we have to – give a, a, a level of respect and honor the work that those two ladies did here in St. Louis as our former president, as establishing our chapter, mm-hmm. and the hard work that they did. It wasn't a, a simple process. Like Black Nurses Rock, the national chapter, have a serious process to become a Not just anybody's going to become a chapter. Okay. You got to work for it and, 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 and earn your position. To okay. be a local chapter, and I have to say, Dr. Michelle Grimes and Nico Former, um, they did that, and so I salute them for that. And then they passed me the torch. And so, what does that look like for us? Um, it, it looks like continuing the mission on what we've done previously, uh, connecting with those organizations in the community that missions their missions align with us. Okay, are you? Can we talk about some of those organizations? Because I see you. A lot working with Dr. Lori Punch, mm-hmm. and um, you want to name a few other people or talk about some of the things that you are that you work with. Sure. So we work with Dr. Lori Punch. We work with BJC Diversity um, Organization. It's like uh, Diversity in Healthcare with BJC. We work with Dr. Monty uh, Davis, uh, and I'll go back. So Dr. Monty Davis is uh, the head infection control doctor at the VA hospital. She uh she also is the HIV and uh, she was an HIV and AIDS clinic out of Washington University. She is phenomenal. I just have to say when this lady speak about HIV and AIDS and, and and diminishing the stigma, you want to be in the room, right? And if you're a healthcare provider, you want to be in the room because so much has changed. Yeah. So much has changed. HIV is becoming a, a, a chronic illness, no different than diabetes, no different than hypertension. It's becoming a chronic illness. People are living. I've met people who said, you know, I've had HIV for 34 years. Yeah, you know, speaking of HIV, I think the last thing I read about HIV said that in our time, which is now, that you would either know someone who has the virus or know someone who knows someone who has the virus. So like one out of three people will in our time mm-hmm. have someone will have the virus. Is that accurate? You find it to be accurate? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I believe that to be true that we're going to know somebody that knows somebody or we're going to know somebody directly. Right. But this is a fact. Absolutely. Gotcha. But what I do want to say is that, you know, uh, what I've learned in going through the training, because, uh, and I have to give it out to uh, uh, my sister Simone. Simone is the one, and before I go back, I have to give it up. I, I like to show who introduced me to who. Mm-hmm. So Imani, Sister Imani, is with William and Associates. William and Associates, they address those concerns that we have with HIV and AIDS, with sexually transmitted disease. Uh, safe set, you know, and those issues like that. So I connected with Sister Imani and she invited me out on a platform. I went to that platform and met Sister Simone, mm-hmm. who turned around and introduced me to Dr. Monty. Okay. Because I'm a connector, is what I've been told. Yeah. 
she is. She is. So she is. Um, people just attach to me, and and I love it. Organizations attach to me, and I love it, which is how I get a chance to to meet people for whatever reason and 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 begin to say now how do I take who I met. And I don't take it and use it for my own good. I'm not trying to elevate myself. Right. I go through and I say, how can I take what I've learned today from this person and help the masses? But we're going to do some elevating today. Okay, we elevate. We elevate today, but go ahead. We elevate. Yeah, we're going to do the elevate. Go ahead. We're moving on up. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so with the HIV, I'm able to speak to any and everybody. Hey, a male woman who was HIV positive, she uh, contracted HIV prom night. So my, my children that are in school right now, parents that are in school right now, you might want to say, you know what, uh, you don't know if your child is having sex, but if they are, make sure they're wrapping it up. And if they're not, also, because on prom night, she gave up her virginity to a young man and ended up with HIV. Oh, wow. But the great thing about her whole story is she's here today and that child that she got pregnant with is HIV negative, okay. has graduated from high school. Awesome. Graduated from high school. They're living their best life. So there's medications out here. The problem with what I see is that people tend, you get sick, coronavirus, right? Oh, we can talk about the People don't want to go and get tested for the coronavirus because they don't want to be faced with the stigma. They don't want to be quarantined, right? Same thing with HIV. You heard that you was with, you know, Mr. Watermelon or Miss Cantaloupe, and you heard that Mr. Watermelon was carrying uh, uh, this virus that's known to be deadly, deadly, or Miss Cantaloupe had contracted uh, this virus, but but you just gonna keep in silence that you dealt with that individual, mm. and, but you're positive, but you refuse to go get tested. Mm. That's when you run into a problem. That's why we're here as Black Nurses Rock. Okay. We're here to bring this information to say, go get tested, this medication out here, and you can live a long, healthy life. We're here to say, you know what? We know, we know that sex, and that many people are not going to stop. So we're here to say, let's practice safe sex. Yeah. Let's practice healthy sex. Mm hmm. And I give kudos to those first people who say, let's practice abstinence. I'm with you, right? Yes. Save it for that night. But just in case. Just in case. You don't. We want to be here to say, here are your options. Right. So you can stay healthy in a lot. Right. Okay? Um, and so that's what. Don't be like me. Because I was a parent. It was like, you know, Felicia, I was like, I am not giving my son no freaking condoms because I thought giving him permission to have sex, and I wanted him at that time to wait. And, of course, A.T. over here was not having it, mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. not having it. And I wasn't having it for my own personal reason. You know, my mom went out. I told you I had two children and was, and was pregnant with the son when I graduated from high school. Honestly, Statistically, I was supposed to be a high school dropout. I was never supposed to get a high school diploma, statistically, right? Um, but I walked that stage with my two daughters in the audience and my son in my, in my belly and my come husband on, come on. <laughs> in the audience, right, with my mother and my little brother, Felipe. Give a shout-out to the family, who was my support group. But Michelle is on. Hi, Michelle. Hey, Dr. Brian. Hello, Sister Janita Smith and Lisa Jennings. Hello, sister. Hi, Debbie. Love you. Hello, Debbie. Um, I want to say this, Jaquela, moving forward. Hey, cousin. Um, Sister Janine, how are you? I took those two pounds off there. Two pounds. Okay. So, walk that stage of McClure North High School. Like I said, with my two daughters in the audience who are nurses now, mm-hmm. right? The records have said that we had teenage pregnancy. Hey, what I told you all, we're for food stamp section, that's, that's it. You know, go find a little part time job or a full time job, minimum wage. Right, that's what they expect of you. Right, but you don't, you know, I always, I used to say, 
I'm like Jack in the box. I'm going to jump out that box. That, that's what drove me yeah. to continue. Like, Felicia, you are Jack in the box. Jump out the box. And that's how I felt. Every time I felt like I wanted to quit, I was like, you are Jack in the box. Jump out the box. Now, I know I'm going to have some conscious people saying over here there was something about Jack in the box. And, you know, just like Jack and Jill. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know that at the time. And so I didn't know Jack would, you know, real. Roll down the hill. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You know what I'm saying? So I was just checking the box and I was coming up out of the stereotype. All right. Uh huh. That's all I can say. But that's what kept me going. How did I get into nursing school? Is that my daughter, my oldest child, was getting ready to graduate from high school. And I was like, oh my goodness, she's going to graduate from high school. And all I have is this high school diploma. Mm. So we're looking at 15 years later after I graduated, you know, 17 years after I graduated from high school, I'm saying I have to get the, get some more behind my name to inspire my daughter to go to college. Mm-hmm. So when she walked the stage with her high school diploma from Rockwood Summit, I walked the stage from the community college with my associate degree. Yeah. We had a second child decided she wanted to go get a, a degree from CMO. So she got a one up. <laughs> she gonna go to SEMO. Uh, and I was like, Oh my goodness, how am I gonna inspire this child to continue to get this degree? And I don't have a four year degree. So I had to roll and roll into um so to continue the inspiration. Yeah. Right? Because I feel like you have to live by example, which is how I end up getting here. Um my mom, great support. My children, just trying to keep them inspired. But then you also have those people that say, haven't you been trying to get that nursing degree for 15 years? <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. I left McClure up in 1989, right? I had my whole family. I had rolled in um, the community college, and a friend of mine had linked up with my ex, and they had a conversation. You know what people have those conversations about you? Linked up with my ex, and then she came back to tell me, what was said in the conversation basically like she's been trying to get that nursing degree for fourteen years, fifteen years now. But I got it now. But she got it. I got I have it now. And so it's important that when people are talking about you, you use that energy to fuel your fire. Better. But it's also important to have people that's gonna fan your fire. Your fire. So I have Rhonda here. She fans my my fire. Um my husband fans my fire. My mother, I have friends, my church members, they fed my fire, you right? And so they gave me that burning desire to be like Jack in the box. Come on up out of it. Hey, right? Hey, this girl is Jack in the box. So you got your bachelor's degree in nursing. Is that right? Yes. So what else have you done education-wise related to the healthcare field? And what other seats have you held or memberships have you held related to the healthcare field? Because you have more than one. In the healthcare field? Yeah. Okay. So let's back up. Became a registered nurse, um, started working for Boys on the neurosurgery floor, which I absolutely love neurosurgery. I stayed there four years. After my husband passed away, um, and a lot of people know, after he passed away, that was just like the changing point in my life because he spent just as much time at Boyd's Hospital as I did. So when I would walk up and down the floors, I could, he's gone. Like we, we, we buried my husband, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I could still see him sitting in his spot, is what the secretary uh, uh, would call him. Miss Hanson, go down into your spot. <laughs> <laughs> So every time I went to the nurse's desk, I could still and I could see him sitting in that spot. And things had transpired that was just kind of traumatic for me, um, almost like a post-traumatic stress disorder. So for whatever reasons, I ended up leaving uh, born, and I was glad that I left. But that got me into agency, right? And so yes. I started working agency. I'm working all over the city of St. Louis. I'm driving here and there. Yeah. And I'm going to say this. I know this is Black Nurses Rock, but if you are grieving, you've lost your husband, you lost your child, I recommend you get into a grief support. 
I use that time clock, right? I use the time clock to help me get through that grieving process. Mm -hmm. And so I was working anywhere between 80 to 100 hours a week. Too much. The paycheck was great. Too much. But there was too many hours. And all I did was postpone my healing. And so, but in that process, I've worked um, telemetry. I've worked ICU step down. I have worked uh, select specialty with wound patients and trach patients. And Mm -hmm. um, I did home health. I worked as a school nurse. Um, I worked in in home health, Mm -hmm. home health. And so, mind you, I graduated from nursing school in 2003, passed my boards in 2004, and within, from 2004 to, like, maybe 2012, I have done all these different jobs. I work with a single psychiatric center with the psychiatric patients. I work with um, intellectually uh, delayed patients, you know, uh, through the state of Missouri. And I, I, every job that I've ever done, I haven't found a job as a nurse or a position as a nurse that I have not fell in love with. Because you love being a nurse. I love being a nurse. Yeah. That's because you love being a nurse. And that's so obvious. And so with that being said, I go back to say the opportunity arrives for me to teach. Now, remember what I said at the beginning of this interview. Mm-hmm. Mama said, baby, what do you want to be in life? And I said, a teacher. And she said, no, pick something else. Right. They don't make enough money. And you came full circle. Because you should have what you say. You should have what you say. You know it. You know? There's power in your speech. Every day. And so 2012 come around, and I'm talking to a lady like, you need to get your certification to be uh, a CNA instructor. I was like, okay. So I go up here with the intention to Jefferson City to become a certified nurse assistant instructor. I end up becoming a certified nurse assistant instructor a certified nurse assistant examiner, and also a CMT instructor, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started working for one company uh, that got my foot in the door, and then next I ended up uh, going to work for St. Louis Community College, CNA instructor, and we did that for several years. Um, And then I ended up working at the local public school district here as a health science instructor. And so the CNA instructor just evolved from being a certified uh, nursing instructor to a health occupation instructor, which encompasses so much more. Because you're teaching college and career readiness skills, you're teaching more of uh, of the health science versus just the CNA program, and uh, I teach medical terminology. Okay. And so you say, what other organizations have I worked with, worked with? and been at? or have a seat on a board with or volunteer with, whatever. This is your, this is, this is fee day. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have tagged like that. She's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should have tagged well, like I, don't I, know, I, I, but I want people to understand how you were qualified and quantified to be president of Black Nurses Rock. Okay. You okay. understand? Yes. Okay, so. So, um. Started teaching, I have to say this, out of all the positions I've held, I truly enjoy working as a nurse, but I equally enjoy teaching. I enjoy being an educated educator. I'm very passionate about it. And just like with everybody else, you know, we come with, a, we come with a, you know, some insecurities about this, about that. You know, so when I first got in, I was like, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm enough. So I kept having to tell myself, you are more than enough, you know. Um, and then I had such a, a great staff at St. Louis Public Schools, and I give a shout out to them because they have truly, St. Louis Public Schools, have truly provided me with professional development that make me um, know not only am I more than enough, but I have. Enough. The training yeah. behind it okay. to say, yes, awesome. you can do this. So uh, that was the difference with St. Louis Public Schools. And then I became, uh, I have to give a shout-out to Miss Alberta Smith and Miss Emma McCoy. Those are nurses who, when I get a chance, I am going to uh, uh, give an award ceremony, and their name is at the top of the list. Because when Miss Alberta Smith and Miss uh, Emma McCoy and Miss uh, Alice Bynum 
took me under their wing mm-hmm. in this education spectrum, you know, it's like, hey, you need to get to NCI. So NCI, that's a uh, new teacher institute. And you need to go join MOACD. I get up in Missouri. ACTE is an organization for health science instructors that's in the state of Missouri. Um, well, MOACD is an organization for career and technical educators. The division that I am a member of is for health science educators. And a lot of people don't even realize that they're a health science ed- educator. If you're teaching the, the certified nurse assistant program, uh, you're teaching medical terminology, uh, you are a health science educator. If you, okay. you know, um, if you're teaching EMT firefighter, you are a health science educator. So um, the LPN program, we don't even realize it, but you can become a, a member of an organization that will help you to grow professionally, right? Mm-hmm. So being a part of uh, Missouri ACT E for the past three years, I ended up becoming a president last year while I was the president over the Missouri Health Science Educator, right? Um, and that was a great experience, a great experience. Um, I learned a lot. Now, I still not nominated myself because that's what Felicia Hampton do. <laughs> that's what she do. Like, you got a need, I don't take care of it. It's all right. Uh-huh. So they was like, well, who want to be the president? And everybody's sitting here looking. They looking. And they looking. I'll do it. Had no idea what I was getting into. Have you ever done that before on Facebook? If so, throw us some love. Did you just jump off the cliff and jump in? Jump off the cliff. Take the leap. <laughs> but in jumping off that cliff and jumping in and saying, I'll do it. It's like Kim. she self-nominated herself. Hey, Sister Kim. And I have to say, our board members for Missouri ACTE and our board members for the health science educator, uh, Missy. Much love. I don't even know how to put it into words. They were there, and they were patient, and they trained me. Because typically when you become a president of a division, they want you to be there and have been on the committee so you can hear about this Robert Rules Law. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anybody know about Robert Rules Law? Mm-hmm. That's what the 501c3 is governed by. Gotcha. And so whenever you do something, you have to vote on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. know, all in favor, mm-hmm. all opposed. I learned that. <laughs> so becoming the president was wonderful. Being able to connect with uh, the health science director of Jesse was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And I have to go back to Miss Alberta Smith took me underneath her wing, you know, and so I give a shout out to her and said, I need you to do this, 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 and this. And she finally said to me, until you go back and get your master's, I can't help you. So I'm finishing up my teaching certification now. On my last class, those who follow me on Facebook know this class is my driving her nuts. <laughs> Can we get scraped together? Ah! Right? <laughs> this class is driving me. However, it's important. It's important because we're dealing with children that are exceptional learners. And so that could be your English language learner. That could be your uh, students with IEPs or with okay. 504, uh, 504 plans. It could be your gifted student. You know, the exceptional learner fall underneath so much. There's so much that fall underneath that umbrella. And so to my educators out there, you know what I'm talking about. And so uh, that's it. President over uh, the Missouri Health Science Educator. I served as a role of health and wellness for Black Nurses Rock from 2016 up into uh, late last year. Um, assumed the role as the treasurer for Black Nurses Rock. Uh, sat on um, different platforms and different committees with uh, Brother Anthony Shaheed and helping with his project when he did his 30th year reunion. And, and that was the, fun. The information that mm-hmm. and training that he gave me, he kept saying, Sister, take a tip. And I, I didn't like that title. I'm just going to be honest because I felt like the secretary role requires you to do and know so much. And I, I watched my sister, Angela, who took on the title as a secretary of SOSA and an executive secretary, 
And I've seen how she handles that role at our at the church Life Center International. I seen how when she worked for the state of Missouri, they elevated her to where the governor of the state of Missouri called for her to come and and and, and uh, be a part of the Mike Brown Ferguson uh, issue when they were trying to figure out what is this the Ferguson Commission? Yeah. So I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to take away from that title. You know, I knew that I wasn't a secretary. <laughs> mm-hmm. that, I have to give it up to my sister when I tell you she's so thorough. And so I can sit here today and say, okay, well, I'm more than enough. I can do the role that Brother Anthony Shahid has asked of me, and that took me into becoming the radio program producer for the Freeman Bosley Jr. show. And it's just yes, amazing. Right. Like I think God connects you. He connects you, right? It's your journey. He connects you. And, and, and so it all started with I met this man. Back in 2008, and this ain't the story. We'll do that another show. I met a man who introduced me to um, a lot of different, um, a lot of different things that I just needed to know. And then he turned around and introduced me to Brother Shaheen. So that took me on another path. Mm-hmm. So guys, I could talk about my life. I don't. Why don't say I? Let's just say I don't. I don't. He doesn't. I I do not. I just don't. You know, you see me. You see my post. Um. And I don't want to get off until all that I'm doing because you're going to wonder how is she doing it all. But I have worked with the Mike Brown uh, Foundation. I work with uh, uh, with the mm-hmm. Chosen for Change underneath uh, Jana Gamble and um, that for Jana. What is her production? Uh, a Gamble production, right? Um, I volunteered and did a lot of different things with uh, Jana Gamble underneath uh, the All White Cancer Party that's put on by our brother. And I can't think of his name. But I'm praying for you, brother. Brother, what's his name? Troy? Uh, no. no, 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 not Troy. Uh, I'll get his name. It'll come back to me. Um, I volunteered at um, the African Art Festival. I volunteered mm-hmm. for Women in Vision. Uh, Women in Vision uh, with Yolanda Robinson. Um, Watson. What's the brother's name? Somebody know his name. Watson, Watson. Who, who do the cancer party? They were all white cancer party. He just opened up a uh, uh, a restaurant over in um, in Delmar Loop area. Uh, Orlando Watson. Okay, Orlando Watson. Uh, absolutely. You know, I shot you out earlier since Kim Breach. I was telling them how I show up at your event, and I have my transparent moments, right? And so um, I've been volunteered, and I've been there, and definitely support. I support. You know, if I could support you, I'm here. You support um, everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and I enjoy what I do. I know. You know? I know you do. So, all of that led to, we just going on and on. I know. All of that led to me becoming a member of Black Nurses Rock. I automatically jumped on it, on the uh, bandwagon of Black Nurses Rock when I took the trip. I got in my vehicle. Now, let me bag up 15 years ago. Wait a minute, which trip are you talking about? My black and sister's rock cruise. When my husband was alive, he would drive me everywhere. On days that he didn't feel like he didn't want to drive me, I catch a major attitude. And Tiffany Neal was on this line earlier. Tiffany can tell you that definitely Troy Rose, I love Troy Rose, absolutely. Tiffany can tell you that one night we were going to study for nursing. And my husband decided, you know, he wasn't going to drive me to Illinois over to uh Belleville or Fairview Heights or whatever, and he said I had to drive myself. Now, we didn't have these iPhones back then and these smartphones, mm-hmm. so you just tell me to drive myself clean over to Fairview Heights by myself. I had a major attitude, but I needed to study for my final, and so I was left with no choice to drive myself. I drive over. We had a great time. We had a great study session, Tiffany and I and myself. She can validate the story. On my way back home, I get lost. Be fast, be fast. I get lost. So I had a cell phone, not a smart one. Was it charged? It was charged. Okay. Yes. And I called him. I'm like, honey, I'm lost. He was like, well, where are you? I'm screaming. I'm panicking. I'm on some road with these big containers, and they had fire coming out the top of them. But I'm just trying to get from Illinois to St. Louis. It took the wrong turn. And I'm screaming and I'm panicking. You should have drove me. You should have drove me. 
didn't know that God was actually preparing me. I'll say that again. Come on. I didn't know that God was actually preparing me mm-hmm. to drive myself because my husband wasn't going to be there. So he just started making me drive myself. I was Miss Daisy. <laughs> he used to drive me. And then he started making me drive myself. And so we go back to Black Nurses Rock has a cruise, and nobody wanted to go that I knew. So I loaded up the old Sonic. She did. Drove down to New Orleans by myself. Yes, she did. Because my husband had prepared me. Get yourself, and this ain't about that, but get yourself a mate that's going to elevate you. If your mate don't elevate you, you don't have the right mate. So he empowered me on many levels. I drove down to the Black Nurses Rock Cruise, Rhonda. Mm-hmm. I remember. A cruise that was tax deductible because we had all kind of professional developments on the cruise. We had all types of training that was going on. You could have became a CPR instructor. Um, we learned about finances and protecting your income, health disparities. We had so many. Uh, the whole day was packed. And then we had training. And so then I drove myself back to St. Louis, and I jumped in the car with you. No, your mama first, and we drove me and to Atlanta, and we got lost. Yeah. Going yeah. down here, you know, we went to um, we went down to uh to see my friend's son play football. Okay, okay. Tennessee someplace. We got lost, got it. But we made it back home. Then we drove to Atlanta a couple times, and we got lost. But we made it back home. Then Rhonda and I drove across the country. Yes, we did. We didn't get lost. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so all of that allowed me to say, you know what, Black Nurses Rock is the place I wanted to be. It brought you all of that. That journey brought you to this point mm-hmm. of where you are now as president of Black Nurses Rock. Mm-hmm. So now can we tell the people how they can become members of Black Nurses Rock and what that membership would do for them okay. as, as a member of Black Nurses Rock. Absolutely. Do me a favor, guys, and share the video. Please, we just, I see we got some people on. Do me a favor and just hit that share button because we're getting, we are going to go into a, a quick session uh, about Black Nurses Rock and how you can become a member, um, the benefits. So hit the share button. Do a uh, what do you do? A watch party, you know. I I I typically hit. Or you can tag a friend as well. I hit share and I share and I share when I'm watching someone's uh, video. I also do a watch party. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I support. So do me a favor. Go ahead and and and, and help me help Black Nurses Rock and help someone else because that's what it's about. And we are also live on Blog Talk Radio with a Lation Radio. This is Let's Talk About It with Rhonda. So they can hear us there? Yes. Hey, Blog Talk Radio. We are live on Elation Radio. Okay. And so uh, becoming a member of Black Nurses Rock, I'm going to say this. You can be a nurse. You can be a nursing student. We have different levels where you can come in as an ambassador. We have someone that is an ambassador of Black Nurses Rock at this very moment. Um, and say, you know what, I am not a registered nurse. However, I want to support the mission. I believe in the mission. Uh, it's a very low fee to join. The, you have to join the national chapter in order to um, become a local member. And the national chapter has uh, done everything, and they're just trying to make sure they don't make that over $100. I'll say that again. You can join our national chapter for $100. And I go back and say we have 4,000 active members, yes. right? You can pay a small advertisement if you decide to advertise your business on here because we have um, 190 Facebook members. So we have different levels. We have the entrepreneur level. So if you're an entrepreneur, you pay a little piece of change and you say, you know, I'm going to advertise my business. Okay. Because you are an entrepreneur membership. 
The celebrity membership is still $100 for the national chapter, and it's like me. You want to go into media. We have the only nurses station. I didn't say black nurses radio station. We have the only nurses radio station. Okay. Okay? So you can listen to us. The only nurses radio station. That we own the radio station, Black Nurses Wild. So you say you want to be a celebrity nurse, you can get you a spot. It's a pay for it now, it's not free. Mm-hmm. And get you a spot. Uh, some of the other benefits is Walden University give us a huge discount. And then they turn around and they give uh, our members each year, so many of them, with a free scholarship or major discounts off the tuition. And we already get discounts, all okay. right? Uh, we have partnered with other uh, universities to get discounts off if you want to go back to school and say you want your bachelor's or you want your master's or you whatever, you know, you have that option. Okay. Some other things that we have is the mentoring program. You say, well, I'm a nursing student. Well, there's a low fee for you to join Black Nurses Rock, and we have a mentoring program. You, you might need a mentor because you're in a nurse practitioner program, or you might need a a mentor because you are in school to become a registered nurse, and you just nursing school is just not easy for everyone. Some can just fly through it, mm-hmm. you know. So we have that. You can go on to our site www.blacknurseswalk.com and see what we have to offer there, and look underneath memberships so you can see how much we have to offer. There is the BNR University. The BNR University, you pay twenty five dollars, and you have access to numerous thousands of CEUs, right? Okay. They are at $25, and that's yours to have access to those CEUs. And thank you all for sharing. I see those numbers are coming up. Hi, Dr. Punch. Thank you for tuning in. Lamont Harvey, thank you for tuning in. Sister Rod Salone, thank you. That's another sister that's just been here for me, another nurse, another great nurse. Uh, sister Margaret Stevenson, thank you for tuning in. And Sister Kim, she's one of my newest members. Of Black Nurses Watch. So let's show some love mm-hmm. for Sister Kim Cooper. But as I was saying, when you become a member, you get discounts on uh, apparels. You get discounts on the events. And if you become a lifetime member, which is just a thousand dollars. Can I say this? Where do they do that at? Where they do that at? Where do they do that at? A thousand dollars to become a lifetime member. And you receive discounts off of everything, every event, every convention, every seminar, right? Tuition, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, other things, and I'm not going to go over all of this. I want you all to kind of look. But we got some people that will be graduating this summer. When you, you can get the graduate stole and pen at a discount for becoming a member. So you want to, you know, give you something that associates you with being a part of the okay. Black Nurses Rock Association. You get your graduate stall, right? That's awesome. Yeah. And um, and then a pen. Uh, we have webinars, networking opportunities, and they also now help you with resumes. Okay. And not just know any old resume. Now, these resumes may cost you a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, RJM Consultant. You have to check out our website, that, and that's Dr. Remetrius Mouse Business. So, those are just some of the things that we have nationally. Now, what are we doing locally, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, and Dr. Punch, she tuned in at a very good time because what we're doing here locally, we're partnering with organizations that can help the nurses here in St. Louis because a lot of the things that we do through the national chapter, then you can get Walden University, but we want to connect with other organizations like um, the University of Missouri, Goldfar, St. Louis Community College, SLU School of Nursing, Wash U. We want to connect with them for the nurses that are right here. We want to connect with those nursing students and support them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and just increase uh, diversity in healthcare. It's needed. It is needed. Because what has been shown is that when people look like you to take care of you, you tend to respond a little bit better because we all know that there is this uh, uh, reserve about health care because of so many um, seeking airmen. Mm-hmm. 
you know, things that just, and yeah. so we don't trust, right. you know, easy. But sometimes when you have a person in a room that looks like you, don't necessarily mean you're going to trust because everybody the skin color ain't kin folk. Ain't right. I just seen it. But you can feel a little bit more comfortable sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's why we need to, right, we need to increase diversity in healthcare, diversity in education. So we do Stop the Bleed with Dr. Lori Punch, um, and it is called the T, and the T is expanding, right? Um, Dr. Punch and her team from the T, they travel. They will travel all over the country coming to show and train people how to stop life-threatening bleeding. She came to Black Nurses Rock. She uh, uh, gave all of us the training at Black Nurses Rock. We're in the tennis today. And you don't have to be a member to come to our meetings, which happens every fourth Tuesday of the month. And there's one coming up. Mm-hmm. And if you are a nurse, uh, if you are a healthcare provider for as like an EMT firefighter, uh, respiratory therapist, and, and others, you have to go onto their website. You can actually become certified to teach this. So everybody that attended that became certified to teach Stop the Bleed. How to stop life threatening bleed. She actually came into my classroom for the past two, three years. She's been in my class teaching my high schoolers. That's awesome. How to stop life threatening bleed, right? Um, just recently, the T had where they had uh, the Washington University uh, math students did an event at the T on Delmar, and my students after school took the bus, caught a ride, and went down and participated because one of my students wanted to be a cardiologist and the other two want to be registered nurses. So I have them mingle because I'm a, I am a networker. I have my students mingle and rub elbows mm-hmm. with the people that you desire to work in the field with. So they got a chance to meet pre-med students. That's awesome. Have conversations because that's what Dr. Punch put in place at the team. And so that's what Black Nurses Rock do. That's what I do as Phenomenal Feed. Um, Dr. Monty, Dr. Monty, talk about HIV and PrEP and PEP, you know, and it's important to know if you're in a risky relationship with someone, you know, because folks be risky sometimes. <laughs> right. They risk it all, huh? You want to get you what they call PrEP, pre-exposure. To the HIV, and um, in some places it can be free. Other places you're going to need your insurance. You have to reach out because I don't have that information in front of me today. But if you are in a risky relationship, or you know that you're bouncing here and there, uh, and have a sexual relationship, then you want to say maybe I am a perfect candidate for prep, which will lower your chances of contracting HIV. You still want to wear a condom. Because PrEP is for HIV, but it's not going to stop gonorrhea. It's not going to stop syphilis. It's not going to stop what else is out there? Gonorrhea, syphilis, NGU, yeah. non-gonical. You know, so it's just not going to stop those other uh, STDs that you can get. And then there is PEP, which is post-exposure. And um, post-exposure means that I am HIV positive. Um, I had my PEP. Uh, I know that I need to take this PEP to bring my viral load down. And what I like about it is that when you're on your medication regimen, guess what happens? Your viral load comes down to a level that you are undetectable, so you're untransmittable. And I said earlier that you are undetectable, untransmittable, which means that you can have sex unprotected with your spouse and get pregnant, or he impregnates you because you got your viral load down. So HIV is no longer a death, but mm-hmm. it's becoming a chronic illness. Now, when I say this, it's important to say that you take your pills, whatever your medication regimen is, and don't miss a pill because HIV can change and replicate so quickly that to miss a pill or two be deadly. could be deadly, right? It could cost you, but it could cost you your life. It could cost someone else being infected. And so uh, that's what we do with Dr. Monty. I want to say, yes, 
don't let me forget, tomorrow is National uh, Women and Girls HIV Awareness okay. Day, right? National HIV uh, Awareness Day for women and girls. So make sure you get you some training in uh, and, and get educated for that. We also work with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And what I love about the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is that they're bringing awareness to a cancer called, uh, a blood cancer called myeloma. And so we have Myeloma Sunday, where black nurses rock, and we are looking for a church to come in. If you want my live, I have a few people here on this live. If we can come into your church this month, it's Myeloma Awareness Month. And we want to make sure every Sunday we are at someone's church. All we need is about three to four minutes, definitely about three to four minutes to tell you about it. And then we're going to set up and give more information at the church service. Okay. Right? And so I can tell you that myeloma, it's a blood cancer. It affects blacks twice as much as it affects whites. It is more prevalent in men than it is women. Risk factors include being over the age of 50 and obesity. So you got four things right there. So right now, if you're watching my live, or if you watch my live and your husband's over 50, or your son is over 50, he's over 50, he's a black male, he, um, hey, Roderick, black male, over 50, and obese, he's at a higher risk of development myeloma compared to others. So we need to know this information. Okay. Some of the signs and symptoms of myeloma, because it uh, starts out in the bone marrow itself, some of those signs and symptoms are going to be bone pain and bone fractures, right? Because the, um, the cancer itself starts taking up the space inside of the bone, so now your bones are aching, right? Okay. You're going to have some fatigue because your red blood cells will begin to diminish and lessen because that space is not making the red blood cells, now you're feeling fatigued. You're tired. Yeah. You will have headaches, shortness of breath. And not necessarily all of these symptoms mean that you have myeloma, but it means that if you do have them and they persist, you want to talk to your doctor. Gotcha. Right? And so these are some things that we need to know in our community because I had not heard of my, myeloma, myeloma. I heard of melanoma. Which yeah. is a skin cancer, right? But myeloma is just as prevalent as uh, leukemia, and leukemia, uh, lymphoma. So we need to know these things. We need to know. Hey, look who's on there! I saw Roderick. Carl so Car- versus Carlos. Hey, brother. Hey, Roderick. Roderick, I need you. I need you. I need you to come speak. I'm got. I said I was going to inbox you because I need you for Black Nurses Rod. My sister Angela. I, Hey, Mr. Sis, how are you? Um, we're going to move on. Meeting is because we got to do it. We got to. I was going to say we're going to move on. Did I cover it all? You did. But we we have to talk about the next meeting. Well, our next meeting is March the thirty first. We just rambled on. It's all but right. March the thirty first at the Black Jack Fire Department, which is three. I'm sorry, five six seven five, uh, North US sixty seven, which is North Lindbergh. Uh, and we meet from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, every fourth Tuesday of the month. You just said 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., girl. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I guess that's a long I've been talking for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so one more time. So the next meeting is March the 31st, which is on a Tuesday yes. at Black, is that Black Jack Fire Department? Yes. And the address is 5675 North. Limburg, North U.S. Uh, Highway 67. Yes. And that's Florissant, Missouri, 63034. Absolutely. If you need more information about the meeting, please inbox Felicia, the president of Black Nurses Rock, and you don't have to be a member to come out to the meeting. You do not have to be a member to come out to the meeting. If you decide to join Black Nurses Rock, again, it's just a $100 low fee to join the national chapter and $35 to join your local chapter here. Um, if you decide that you want to be an ambassador for those vulnerable, uh, for the vulnerable community of St. Louis, come join us. Come check us out. You know, 
we uh, our national initiatives, which are our local initiative, is bringing awareness to uh, uh, stroke and heart disease. So we are uh, stroke ambassadors with the American Heart Association. Uh, homelessness, we do a homelessness event in, in November. Uh, that's very passionate to our founder, Dr. Ramitra uh, Smiles Moss, and HIV awareness, which is why we partnered with Dr. Uh, Marty and uh, Williams and Associates. So uh, those are our initiatives at the national level. What we are in here in St. Louis is that we have a lot of gun violence. Because we have a lot of gun violence in St. Louis, then that is uh, uh, bringing uh, prevention. Just want to prevent the violence that's going on in our community. So that will be our focus here as well here in St. Louis. So I thank you all for tuning in. This meeting went a little bit different. You got a chance to know Miss Felicia Mitchell here. I'm going to delete my live. No, no, she's not. And thank you all for tuning in on Blog Talk Radio. Let's talk about it with Rhonda on Elation Radio. We have had, well, you, as you all could see, I didn't have to interview her. She just, be fashion, the, the president of Black Nurse of Rock, Mrs. Felicia Mitchell Hampton. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Rhonda. It's been awesome. And let's talk about it with Rhonda. <laughs> I love it. All right. This has been Rhonda McAllister, and we will see you at the top. Thank Good you. Good night, everybody. Thank you.